Hey there guys, so today I want to show you how I made my DIY 3-in-1 brewing chamber. This simple to make all in one unit has put me in complete control of the brewing process post brew day. It's essentially a fermentation slash conditioning chamber, a grain fodder conical fermenter cooler slash glycol chiller and a kegerator all in one. With this DIY setup, I've gone from making good beers to making fantastic, delicious beers that are as good, if not better, than some commercial beers out there. The good news is, it costs very little to put together. Let's break it down. First things first, fermentation and conditioning. Now, aside from sanitization and yeast pitch rate, the most important thing to focus on is fermentation temperature. If you've ever tasted a beer that smells boozy, is overly fruity, or has off flavors, then it's probably due to unstable fermentation temperatures. My DIY fermentation chamber has switched fermentation control. This gives me full control to ferment at a stable, precise temperature. Now, the clarity of a beer isn't a priority for many a home brewer I know, nor is it required in many beer styles. However, if you want to brew styles such as lagers and pilsners, you need the ability to cold crash that beer to help ensure crisp, crystal clear beer. Cold crashing is performed when the beer is fully fermented and ready to be either bottled or kegged. The process involves lowering the temperature of the beer very quickly to near freezing temperatures and holding it there for approximately 24 hours. Because this DIY system is essentially a fridge, it allows me to place my fermenter inside, connect it up to an STC 1000 and drop the temperature to near freezing while being able to precisely monitor and control the cold crashing temperature of the beer. As I mentioned earlier, this DIY unit can also be used as a cooling system and glycol chiller for the grain fodder conical fermenter, which gives me excellent fermentation control. Now, a good fermentation environment starts with a clean and sterile fermenter, which has consistent controlled temperature base and minimal exposure to oxygen. A stainless steel unit, just like grain fodders, will give you precise control over the fermentation process. Now, the fermenters you see in professional breweries are capable of both heating and cooling the beer inside to precisely the temperature required. Grain Fodder's stainless steel conical fermenter is similar. Heating rods inside the unit will raise the temperature of the beer, while a cooling kit with a pump and hose connectors will cool the beer by pumping cold water around its inner walls. But you need a source for the cold water. I'll show you my setup for this in a little while. Now on top of everything else, this DIY system later converts into a kegerator, ideal for home brewers and beer enthusiasts to keep your kegs chilled and ready to dispense. So with that overview out of the way, let's take a look at what's required to make and set up each of those components. First and foremost, we need a fridge freezer or just a fridge, which is big enough to hold a plastic bucket or a fermentation barrel. This one here is a secondhand Hot Point Ice Diamond Fridge Freezer. I bought online for I think it was like 30 euros. In addition to the fridge freezer, here are some other parts you will need. An STC 1000 temperature controller. An alternative for this is the Inkboard temperature controller. A junction or enclosure box. An electric tubular heater, let's say for the greenhouse shed garage, um, one foot would do fine. Plug socket box with integrated USB socket. A five volt USB powered ball bearing computer case cooling fan. A half inch Thermowell weldless quick fitting stainless steel 304 treaded pipe immersion well. Approximately eight foot length of wood to make two platform shelves and approximately four meters extension lead. 
Now guys, before we can install the STC-1000, we need to drill a hole into the side of the fridge freezer to run the thermostat and the power for the tubular heater and USB fan. So first of all, we disconnect the fridge freezer from the mains. We locate a position on the outside of the fridge that's about two inches above the top part of the fridge's back base shelf. Next, use a very small, narrow drill bit and drill slowly until you've pierced through the fridge's outer aluminium wall. Guys, you're only looking at drilling about approximately two millimeters into the fridge, so be very careful. Then use a blunt toothpick or something similar to gently push through the hole and through the fridge's inner installation while slowly pushing it in and out at different angles, feeling around for any potential cooling wires. Now, if you happen to feel one of those cooling wires, you will need to relocate to another position, either above or below the original hole that you've drilled. Repeat the process until you're certain no cooling wires are running close to the small hole you've just pierced. Once you're certain there are no cooling wires around the area, you need to drill through using a larger drill bit. Slowly and carefully drill a hole through the wall of the fridge. The STC has a probe which is placed on the fermenter inside the fridge. A wellless thermowell is handy to have fitted on your fermenter. The probe sends temperature data back to the unit which then powers either a heat source, e.g. tubular heater, or a cold source, e.g. your fridge, based on what temperature you set it to maintain. The result is that you can keep your fermenting wort stable at the exact temperature you set. Now there are of course other solutions to the STC-1000 on the uh, market, however this is my recommendation especially if you're on a budget. Before wiring let's take a look at fitting the STC-1000 into a junction box. You'll need to cut a rectangle out of the face of the junction box that is a little bit smaller than the size of the face of the STC-1000 that will allow it just to slip in. Here's an overview of how my STC-1000 is connected to the fridge for cooling and the tubular heater for heating. For full details on wiring, please refer to the STC-1000 manual or just search online for STC-1000 wiring. The first cable which runs from the STC is the probe and this is inserted through the hole of the fridge that you drilled earlier on. The next cable that runs from the STC-1000 is the power source for the tubular heater and fan. This is also inserted through the hole in the fridge and connected to the power socket with integrated USB port. The next cable which runs from the STC is the shorter power lead and a socket at the end. This will allow you to plug in your cooling source, e.g. the fridge itself. And finally, the last cable connected is the power source for the STC-1000. The platform base. Now, before we can pop a fermenter into the fermentation chamber, we need a sturdy platform base to sit the fermenter on. For this, I have built two platforms from wood, which will basically sit on the back of the fridge to create a solid platform. I drilled several holes into the top section of each to allow the heat source beneath distribute heat more efficiently. I then sit the USB fan on the back of the fridge, ideally two on either side, and plug them into the USB socket. These can also be stuck onto the back wall of the fridge using Velcro. I then place my tubular heater inside the wooden platform and plug it into the socket inside the fridge. All that's left now is to pop in my fermenter and attach the thermometer sensor to the side of the fermenter and set my fermentation temperature. I recommend you fit a weldless thermowell to your fermenter to slip the sensor into. Alternatively, you can fix this to the side of the fermenter covered with a piece of, let's say, aerofoam. Depending on the temperature you've set, the STC-1000 will then automatically switch between the heat source and the cooling source to keep the wort in your fermenter at a precise temperature, while the fans inside will circulate that temperature evenly. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the grain fodder conical fermenter is a fantastic choice for fermentation if you're serious about home brewing and want to make top-notch beers. 
Although the unit has integrated heating, you will need an additional kit for cooling. Before we place the cooling pump and hoses inside the fridge, we'll need to drill two large holes into the top half of the fridge door. This will allow us to run both the hoses and power cable for the pump into the fridge. Those holes will also hold the kegerator taps later on. Now, many fridges, they don't have cooling lines in the door, but be careful and follow the same process as earlier. Once you've drilled both holes, you need to connect the blue hose to the lower connect on the grain fodder fermenter and the red hose to the upper connect and run these into the fridge holes. I've cut the installation in half so that one part can run on the outside and cover the hose and one will run on the inside and cover the hose. We must also run the pump's power cable through one of those holes. A short slit on the top of the installation of one of the hoses will ensure you can tuck that cable underneath the installation and run it into the, uh, the hole of the fridge. Fill a plastic bucket, maybe, a half full with water. Connect the blue hose to the pump as indicated in the instructions and place it inside the fermentation bucket, making sure it's well covered with water so that it sits at the base of the bucket. Set the fridge temperature to its coldest setting. Then make sure the settings of your grain fodder fermenter are set for cooling and heating. The cooling element of this setup, depending on how cold your fridge will go, will cool your grain fodder conical fermenter to a minimum of approximately nine degrees Celsius. Now, it is possible to drop these temperatures even further, close to freezing point, depending on your fridge freezer. Very similar to how I use the fridge part, you could also use glycol in the freezer part and have your cooling tube run from either the top door of your freezer or the side of the freezer. Now, once you've finished fermenting and conditioning your delicious craft beer, you'll need a way to dispense it. So with any kegerator, the main parts you'll need in addition to the kegerator itself are as follows. Two 19 liter corny kegs, a CO2 cylinder filled with CO2, a CO2 cylinder regulator, and in addition to those main parts, we also need two adjustable flow controlled craft beer faucets, two pairs of ball lock MFL beer keg disconnect set with swivel nuts, approximately four plus meters of gas line tubing, then approximately six plus meters of beer line tubing. We also need a two-way brewing gas manifold CO2 distributor splitter. And we need some hose clamps, approximately six to 12 millimeter range adjustable. Make sure they are stainless steel. So the two main holes that we drilled in the fridge door earlier on for the grain fodder cooling hoses also double up as the holes for the beer faucets. And yeah, let's take a look at the beer faucet assembly. The shank of each beer faucet is pushed through the hole on the fridge door and tightened inside using the wing nut that came with the beer faucet. Feed one end of your beer line through a hose clip and then insert the elbow barb onto the beer line and tighten the hose clip. You'll then need to place another hose clip over the other end of the beer line and push the black ball lock onto the beer line and tighten up the hose clip. Repeat this process for the second tap and the second beer line. Screw and tighten both elbow barbs onto each of the faucet shanks inside the fridge. You now need to feed the gas line into the fridge. Depending on the location and the size of the hole created earlier in this video for the tubular heating um, power lead, it may also be possible to fit the gas line through the same hole. However, that didn't quite work for myself. So I basically drilled a new hole for the, uh, the gas line feed. Once your gas line has been fed into the fridge, you can then attach it to the gas line splitter manifold inside the fridge, again using hose clips. You then need to run two short lengths of gas line from each of the two barbed splitters and tighten them both with hose clips. 
At the other end, running from the gas line splitter, you'll need to attach two gray quick disconnects, again, with some hose clips. The gas line, which runs out of the fridge, can now be connected to the CO2 cylinder regulator. Now set the fridge's temperature gauge depending on the beer you are dispensing. Lagers may need to be served cooler than ales, but again, this is completely subjective. Now set your CO2 regulator to a serving PSI of around 15. Leave your beer to chill for a couple of hours or for a couple of days before serving. Now it may take a little time to find out what CO2 regulator configuration suits you. So a bit of trial and error may be required before you're pulling amazing, delicious pints. Enjoy guys.